Well, today was the day. Hi there, my name's Timmy Joe. Make videos about computers on the internet. Today was the day I finally got my conductor knot from Thermal Grizzly and decided to do a deleting. Baby KB Lake got the old delete today and uh, it was an experience, I gotta say. A, a crazy experience because I didn't use no delid kit. I didn't use, I just razor bladed it and it was kind of, it was very scary. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll go over the whole process and all that and what have you. Let's talk about deliding a CPU, why you might want to do it, if you should do it, probably not. Let's just go ahead and talk about maybe Intel also should just freak from fix this whole problem so that you don't have to nearly damage your CPU to get 10 degrees difference. So cue the intro. I'm going to talk all about deleting an Intel high-end CPU and just my experience, how, how crazy was that? Alright, so if you don't know what this stuff is, it is gallium, I'm pretty sure, essentially. Basically, it's like mercury that doesn't kill you. It's metal that it just doesn't solidify at ambient temperatures. So it's something you can put that gives very good thermal conductivity uh, from the processor die, you know, right here, to the, uh, you know, IHS, the heat integrated heat spreader. That way, uh, when you put a really good cooling solution, you get way better temperatures. Now, if you don't know, Ryzen actually solders that die, that CPU business, right on to that big metal part. So there's no reason to do this because, I mean, solder is, it's actually hardened uh, metal, you know, that, that makes it, the whole process so much better. But with Intel, they use thermal grease. So you basically end up sandwiching your CPU die with some thermal grease and then a piece of metal and then some thermal grease and then probably a piece of copper uh, you know, for your uh, your cooling solution, and then you know that, that's a lot of metal layers for no reason. And what you're basically doing is eliminating one of those by putting metal between the CPU die and the heat spreader. And uh, I decided not to buy a freaking solution. There are there are solutions out there. Here, let's check this out. Uh, so the thermal compound was 1498 just in case you were wondering. And uh, you, you can look, look, buy them on Amazon. Now, Debauer, the guy that's like, you know, he's got a YouTube channel, he's famous for overclocking, makes these things. And I didn't, uh, they're not in stock. And I was looking at buying this one and it's uh, used. So I was, uh, I'll just do it myself. And I looked up some videos and found out that you can do it yourself with a razor blade if you're crazy. So let's go over some B-roll here of me essentially uh, being absolutely crazy. So I pull my uh, really good Arctic uh, AIO off of the thing and uh, I get um, you know the, the CPU ready and I go I have a hundred different uh, really nice razor blades and you know, I had everything ready here. I got filming and um, I watched a couple videos online about it. And it seemed as though it would be pretty easy to just get the razor blade underneath the IHS and away you go. But I had lots of trouble. Like for 20 minutes, I was trying to get uh, what was essentially too thick of a razor blade between that heat spreader and the green, uh, you know, CPU wafer. And I, like I, I didn't want to ruin anything. And I got, I was getting scared. I even put it in a vise and tried to, uh, uh, you, you can do that with older generations. I thought maybe I could loosen things up. I tried uh, heating the CPU up with a with a heat gun. That was a bad idea. So in the end, I watched the video over again and realized you have to, just, just so you guys know, get the uh, really thin razor blade, as thin as possible. The ones that, ha that kind of fit into like scrapers seem to be the best. You should be able to bend it, okay? If it's a, a really hardened steel one that's a little bit thicker, you're going to have trouble with it. And then you get that into a corner and you should be able to get it between the green, uh, you know, wafer or, or uh, PCB and the heat spreader and, and start like zooming it in. And if it's really hard, you're probably not in there. I thought maybe I just was like uh, cursed with a, a CPU that had like really good uh, material around it for holding it on. No, I just wasn't getting underneath it. 
So once I did, uh, it was a very simple process. It took me like less than two minutes to get the thing off. And then uh, I will admit, there I was kind of scared. There is a couple of scuffs in the green wafer or PCB that uh, you can kind of see some shiny spots. And I've heard that can cause huge problems, but it, uh, it booted. It was fine. I actually ended up testing it. Uh, without putting the thermal grizzly on it first with just some regular old uh, you know CPU grease just to make sure everything booted and ran us you know uh, Cinebench you know everything worked fine so I have results before and after let's talk about them okay basically I liberally uh, applied the thermal grizzly realized it was it's pretty hard to get that liquid metal on there I had some weird uh, I, I must have spent 40 minutes trying to make sure I had it the right one. A lot of the set, like the uh, older generation before this, the 7700, doesn't have all those transistors around the die. And if you get th the liquid metal on those transistors, it'll short out and you could ruin your CPU. So it was being very careful just to break the perfect amount because I've seen people put too much and they cause a short. It's not a, it's not a good time. It's not a good time. So I put the perfect amount. I put a little bit on the IHS. I left the black surround on the green part, not cleaning that off because I've heard that that's just a good way to find you know the exact spot that IHS is supposed to go back on and I clean the IHS really good everything uh, comes with an alcohol swab this thing it comes with like a little uh, needle that shoots the stuff out it comes with a warning not to use this on aluminum because it will eat aluminum it's climbing mit aluminum karfuffen verweifen anyways so yeah uh, get that on there and you know fire all up and lo and behold really freaking good results. So I have a video on this CPU before delitting. Uh, I'm able to get a four, uh, 5.2 gigahertz, sorry, at 1.3, almost 1.4 volts. Like not very stable, temperatures get up high there. My uh, go-to on this was five gigahertz. So let's look at some five gigahertz results here. So this is beforehand, five gigahertz is like a generally accepted overclock for a 7700 or uh, you know, a 7740X. And we see here that I'm 73, I'm getting up near 75 degrees on the package. And uh, you know, the, that's just one Cinebench run. Uh, but in contrast, boom, 60 degrees on the package afterwards with the exact same settings in the BIOS. So an 11 degree difference, okay? That is, that's huge, okay? And they, they put thermal grease between you know the die and the the, the heat spreader, you all you got to do is buy some liquid metal, and you could save yourself 10 degrees. Is huge with the exact same cooling solution. Let's look at Prime 95 here. Uh, it was going up to about 88 degrees. Okay, what's that? 88, 89 degrees on the package. Well, uh, this is after running Prime for for 15 minutes. Let's switch it out here at five gigahertz. Go down to 76 degrees. That's crazy. That's a it's a huge result of over 10 degrees at uh, you know, a high load at 5 gigahertz. That means I could run 5 gigahertz all day long. I'm, I was kind of concerned before. Now I'll leave the CPU at 5. Uh, I'm going to try and hit 5.2 all the time. Actually, it seems like it's nice and stable there at uh, 4. Uh, I'm sorry, 1.41 volts. That's really high for, for this CPU. But the temperatures are fine. So uh, let's look at the, you know, super crazy results here. This is uh, fun. So let's go ahead and uh, th this is the result uh, when we have 5.4 gigahertz. But why show you a screenshot when I can just boot the system up and actually show you it run? So let's go ahead and do that. All right, we're in the BIOS here. We just want to make sure, right, huh? Just make sure here. What are we doing? Voltage? Way too freaking high. My goodness, it's going to be crazy. So, as you can hear, I have all the fans just cranked on her. We got that crazy Intermax fan that blows like uh, 5 million RPM, blowing right at the VRMs. It's all loaded here. 5.4 gigahertz, 1.505 volts. You know, will can we do it? And then never do it again? Let's just go ahead and see. There we go. 
5.4 gigahertz. That's as high as it'll go as far as I can tell. I'm gonna have to do some sort of exotic cooling or mess with the voltage or something. But let's, let's just have a look, see. Freaking hell. 11.56, that's only 25 uh, points higher than I'm able to get at uh, 5.2 gigahertz. So is this worth it? Not at all, but for the sake of just seeing if it'll do it, here we go. And 92 degrees on the package, which uh, all things considered, 1.5 volts. That's that's not a bad temperature uh, for a run a center bench. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all turned off because it's way too loud. And uh, then we'll sum things up. All right, she's all turned off. Isn't that crazy? Running Cinebench at 5.4 gigahertz. That's awesome. I mean, that's not anywhere near something you'd want to do all the time. And it, it, like, it's, it's just crazy that I got there, was, even at that insane voltage. But uh, would I recommend deleting your CPU? Hell yes, if you're that kind of person. If you're a tinkerer, okay? Because it's 10 degrees. But if you're one of those people that's kind of iffy about it, you should probably just buy a better CPU cooler. Or if you have the best CPU cooler, just deal with that, you know, a little bit less performance for the temperature hit you're going to take. Uh, because it's it's risky. It's, uh, I7's what, 300 bucks? 350 bucks? And you're going to ruin it with, a, you know, not knowing what you're doing or, or you know, maybe you've got shaky hands or something. But in the end, it's like, what, 1499 for Thermal Grizzly. And if you have a really thin... Uh, razor blade and your you know steady hands you could get this job done and you get a whole 10 degrees minimum difference at load so i mean going through all these results it's fun it's 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 like i love getting the most out of a cpu i love getting the most to just like kind of go through things here so it's fun so uh stick around because i'm going to do a little bit more with the thermal grizzly we're going to do a shunt resistor mod on my 1080 ti because if we're going to ruin or you know attempt to ruin things we might as well do it on the most expensive graphics card i own too ha huh, but that might actually land me on the fire strike hall of fame if i do that mod so stick around what that means is i'm going to get more power out of my 1080 ti with some you know doing that might even replace uh the thermal grease on that uh, late another video but I bet you've been wondering this whole time, what's with the shirt? It's got my freaking face on it. This one's got my logo on it. You want one of these shirts? Yeah, I don't know. I might sell them. Like limited run. But comments below. Would you buy a Timmy Joe shirt if I put it up on a website? I'd love to know. I watch Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter. I have a contest. Help me get to 20,000 subscribers and you could win a CPU, a GPU, an SSD. But uh, it's always lots of fun to do these overclocking videos. And now that I have that deleted, I'm going to do some, you know, cool, you know, some stuff with it. Some more uh, benchmarking and what have you. We'll do a follow-up video once uh, the delid has been around for a little bit. And I've got some super impressions on it. But for, you know, just doing it today and seeing the results I've already seen, that's pretty freaking awesome. I hope this guide helped you a little bit on, you know, how to delid and whether or not you'd consider doing it yourself. But I'm Matt Watch Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter. Check out my content check out me on Twitter because you can win extra stuff on Twitter and I got shirts if you want to buy one you can't but I don't know leave a comment below maybe I'll maybe I'll sell them so I'll see you guys in another video and I have a shirt I mean I have a freaking shirt delete your CPU if you want 10 degrees here's a shirt I'm out of 5,000 I'm gonna go put my shirt several of my shirts on bye